Welcome to a day in my life of wrapping up books I've read recently. <laughs> what a long and boring title. Basically, I hate making wrap-up videos. Specifically, I don't like sitting in one spot for an hour at a time trying to be semi-intelligent about a bunch of books I've read. I get really frustrated with myself, I drink too much wine, I complain, and I want to scream. But I still like making wrap-up videos because I like looking at them later and seeing my feelings about a book if I can't really remember fully. To combat this problem of wanting to watch my wrap-up videos but hating filming them, I thought I would spend a day just casually wrapping up books I've read recently throughout my day. Today is Mother's Day. I have a lot of things to do. I'm helping my mother clean. I'm hanging out with my mother. So I'm gonna be here at my apartment and also at my parents' house. And I thought throughout the day, I would just sprinkle in reviews. Before I go to my parents, let's talk about the first book. And that is Mari and the Night Brothers by B.B. Alston, which I read between February and March when I keep asking myself, is this a leap year? How many days are in February? This is a middle grade novel. It's sort of like a men in black secret government agency, but instead of aliens, it's supernatural creatures. And we have our main character, whose older brother has been missing for several months and was a part of this organization. And he invites her to basically complete a series of trials to be accepted fully into this agency via a summer camp. I love this so much. I really love bureaucracy and magic. I think it's just really interesting to see something that is so similar to our real lives mixed with a fantasy element. I loved the descriptions of the agency. I loved the world building. The plot was really fun. I liked Amari and I like the way that B.B. Alston twisted this chosen one narrative and made it something that felt really familiar but also new. I loved the friendships, I loved the pacing, I just really really adored it. And if you're a fan of Nevermore, I think that this has a similar vibe to it while also being something completely different and completely separate in a really beautiful and fun and new way. So I'm very excited to read more books in this series and to dive into Amari and the Knight Brothers even more. You can't even see me, which makes this like particularly artistic, I think. I wanted to talk about Honey Girl by Morgan Rogers, which was on a lot of people's best of 2021 already list. Like, it's become a favorite very quickly, and I can understand why. Now, Honey Girl, for the most part, is a coming-of-age story, but a coming-of-age story that I really like, which is about a girl whose prefrontal cortex has finished developing, and she has changed a lot as a person. But it's also a romance. Um, but I think the romance is the weakest part of this book. And I think it's the weakest because this is really more of a coming-of-age than it is a romance. It reminds me a lot of a lot of, like, British rom-coms, not tonally, but in terms of the fact that the romance is second seat to the central storyline of a woman figuring her life out, a woman in her 20s. I really, really loved this a lot for that reason. I love the breadth of the story. I love that it moves from California to New York City to Florida. I really, really like the way Morgan Rogers writes places, and I think they do a really fantastic job doing that. And I think if I had spent more time with this romance, this lovely sapphic romance, I would have loved it more. But I just don't think there was enough time with it. Do you think I liked the book? Actor Age, Eve Brown. Actor Age. The third book in the Brown Sisters trilogy. Oh, the first one was Actor Age. The no, second the one? third one was Actor Age. Okay, I'll tell you the other two. I remember you didn't like... Act Your Age, the precursor to that was Not Your Shoe Size, which was kind of out of order. And then the one before that was uh, something called Genesis. So the three books... Um, Do you think I like the third one? The third one, yes. Act that Your was, Age. That one was spot on. That one, that one was, the, that was the capper. So, was my dad right? Did I like Act Your Age, Eve Brown by Talia Hibbert? the third book in the Brown Sisters trilogy. 
yes, I loved it. It actually was my favorite of the trilogy, which is weird because I thought it was going to be Take a Hint, Danny Brown, but the longer that I've sat with this book, the more that I have loved it. I really enjoyed the small town setting. I loved seeing Eve Brown, who has this sort of Alexis Rose mentality about her, really come into her own in a similar way that Alexis Rose does on Schitt's Creek. I really enjoyed the dynamics. I enjoyed the romance. I thought it was cozy and sweet and felt really special and lovely. It also has autistic rep, which I cannot specifically speak to, but I did think that it was very honest and genuine. All in all, I really loved this book. My only qualm with this book, and it's a similar qualm that I had with Get a Life, Chloe Brown, was in that third act when the hero, you know, is really riddled with miscommunication with our lady character. Um, he says a lot of really mean stuff, and I just kept thinking, like, they're gonna have to go to couples therapy, because that, even with apologies, even with an understanding that they miscommunicated, and had their own things that they were projecting, they're probably gonna have to talk about that because that's really nasty stuff that that person just said. So I don't love that. But overall, really did enjoy it, really loved it. It was great. Now I have to go clean some more. So the next book that I want to talk about is Romancing Mr. Bridgerton by Julia Quinn. I have been rereading slash reading for the first time the Bridgerton books with my friend Emily over the course of the last few months, and while I really enjoyed the third book, I talked about it in my last wrap-up video, I hated this book. This book is about Colin Bridgerton and Penelope Featherington and the fact that Penelope had been secretly in love with Colin for like nearly a decade and when they finally get together he just abuses her emotionally, verbally, and at times even physically like grabbing her wrists, being just really horrible. I like the fact that they both had this shared passion for writing but you see just Colin's jealousy for Penelope's talents throughout the book and he only kind of repents at the end for that. Oh, great. It's the next day. I left my camera at my parents' house, so we're here. Okay, let's talk about the next book. I read You Deserve Each Other by Sarah Hoggle. This was quite a whim read for me, meaning that I'd heard about it a lot, I pondered reading it quite a lot, and then it was at my library as an audiobook, so I picked it up. Basically a whim read. This is a hate to love about an engaged couple who are trying to drive the other one away and vice versa because they are tired of each other and they truly hate each other. But in doing so, are honest with each other for the first time in their relationship and therefore actually fall in love. This is a true hate to love. These people truly resent each other, truly hate each other, and they truly end up falling in love. And I really enjoyed that. As someone who's not a big fan of Hate to Love, because most of the time I feel like it's not really Hate to Love, this felt like a real Hate to Love. It's also a second chance romance, which is another trope I truly, truly enjoy. I like that you see that the male character stands up for his girlfriend slash fiance to his mother, who is kind of like the absolute worst and you see that character development. I also like the fact that I hated both of these characters at the beginning of the book, and then I fell in love with them at the end. It was a hate to love for me as well. Next book I wanna talk about is actually two books, and that is Desperate Measures by Katie Robert and A Worthy Opponent by Katie Robert. These are both a part of the Wicked Villains series. I read the third one first, and I read the first one second, and I didn't read the second one. So, I read the third one first because a friend of mine, Joss, was like, we should do a buddy read. I was like, yes. And we ended up deciding to dive into the series because we knew so many people who really loved it. These are sort of like pseudo retellings, reimaginings of Disney villain stories. Like the first book is Jasmine and Jafar and the third book is Hook and Tinkerbell. And we chose the third one first because both of us aren't really into Hate to Love. I know I just talked about a Hate to Love book, but we're not really into it. And this was the only one billed as like not Hate to Love but it was hate to love. And then after we finished that third one, I was like, well, maybe I'll go back and listen to the first one. I was listening to these on audiobooks. 
I don't really know why I did that. I think I just was bored and they were unscribbed. I personally just wasn't super into these. I don't really like this trope. I don't like non-consensual consensual. I'm not interested in that. I don't like dark romance. Just none of this really worked for me. This is also like a semi mobster story and that's not really interesting to me. I just wasn't that interested. I will say that I think the part of this book that worked for me was the twisting of the Disney heroes as being worse villains than the Disney villains who were the heroes. I don't think these books are bad, I just didn't really enjoy them personally. And it has to do with everything that I just mentioned. They're just not for me. Hello. The next book I want to talk about is Love in Color by Balu Babalola. This is an anthology of retellings of folklores and mythology from specifically West Africa, but there are retellings from the Middle East, from Greek mythology. If you're a fan of romance, this book really covers the gamut of different kinds of loves and experiences, uh, some tragic, some sweet, some funny. I really enjoyed this a lot. I got the audiobook, which I would recommend, and found it really soaring and beautiful and touching. I, yeah, I really, really enjoyed it. And I really enjoy following Balu Babalola on Twitter. She's very funny and talks a lot about like rom-coms and romance and television and media, which is just, it's everything that I want to read. I'm gonna make some lunch. <laughs> Come with me on this journey. Why would I buy all the parts of our charcuterie board when I can just eat a Lunchable? Okay, now that we have lunch figured out, let's talk about the next book, which is Ghost Squad by Clarabelle Ortega. I picked this up because I wanted to buy it for my niece and nephew. I actually bought a physical copy, but I tend to try to read the book before I give it to them, and I decided to pick up the audiobook for this because it was on Scrib. Um, Safe to say, I'm gonna give it to my niece and nephew next time I see them. I really enjoyed this. This is a supernatural middle grade novel. It's so much fun. It was really lighthearted while also being quite serious. I think it skirts that line beautifully. I love the imagery, I love the descriptions. I love controversially books set in Florida and this is set in Florida. I really, really enjoyed this. This is a great Halloween read, but I read it, you know, in May, April, and it was also very good, got me into that like six months before Halloween mood. Yeah, I really enjoyed it and I'm excited to read the next book that Clarabella Ortega writes. What am I doing? The next book I want to talk about is From Scratch by Tembi Locke. This is a memoir that had been on my TBR since it came out in 2019. It's a memoir about loss and food and life and Italy and America. It's about Tembi Locke's relationship with her husband who passed away from cancer um, a few years ago and she talks about losing him but she talks about her life with him and everything that happened after. It's a really beautiful, very powerful, grief-filled book and has so many hopeful messages while also being honest. I like this book a lot. I listened to the audiobook, which I would recommend because Tembi Locke reads it herself. It made me sob. Like, within the first hour of listening to it, I was crying my eyes out. So, yes, it's quite brutal, but the way that Tembi writes about food and travel and her life is, is really stunning. And also this is being adapted into a, I think a mini series on Netflix by Reese Witherspoon, which I'm very interested in seeing. I would recommend it if you like kind of a brutal read every once in a while. Um, it's definitely that, while also, again, being very beautiful. I really wanted to get Lisa Vanderpump's wine um, because I had it at the grocery store, but it was $20 and I just didn't feel like spending that much money. But it would have been perfect because I'm about to talk about a book I read 
that's writer loves The Real Housewives, so. So the book I'm gonna talk about, The Person Who Loves The Real Housewives, is Casey Wilson and her book, The Wreckage of My Presence. Casey Wilson is a character actress. She has been in a lot of stuff, but I think most notably maybe, she was in a sitcom called Happy Endings that I really like. It was on for three seasons. Very funny show, highly recommend. Um, I enjoy her a lot and I had been anticipating this book for a long time. I even like got rejected for a Neck Alley arc for it, which I'm glad I waited because I listened to the audiobook, which I think is the preferred medium for me with memoirs. I, or collection of essays, I really enjoyed this. I think it's a celebrity memoir done really well. I would put it in the category that like Busy Phillips memoir is in and Gabrielle Union where it's funny and fun and lighthearted while also being very serious at the same time. Main core of this book or tether throughout this book is Casey Wilson losing her mother quite young. She lost her mother when she was in her 20s. Her mother was in her mid 50s and the trauma that left her with and how that shaped her life and her career. I really liked this. I laughed a lot. I even shed a tear. I think it was really well worth the read. But I will say, if you have no idea who Casey Wilson is, I don't necessarily think maybe this is a book you should pick up. The final book that I want to talk about is, of course, a Nora Roberts book. I do want to make kind of a giant disclaimer that I didn't mention in my Nora Roberts video that is 20 minutes long, how dare I? I don't read Nora Roberts for the romance. If the romance is good or even okay, that's sort of a happy accident. I don't think Nora Roberts excels at writing romance. A lot of the times it feels really rushed and not quite earned, and that's a problem. This happens a lot in her series, like the first book, the romance will be very rushed and then the rest of the series will be a little less rushed because you've had more time with these characters, but that is a problem and I wanted to mention that because I don't want people going in reading Nora to think like I'm gonna get like a Emily Henry, Talia Hibbert level romance. You're not gonna get that. You're gonna get vibes, you're gonna get great friendship. You're gonna get great dialogue and scene work and mentions of holidays and descriptions of food. That's what you're gonna get, which is what I love and my favorite part in any book when those things are done well. Okay, so saying all of that, I started a new Nora series I talked about in my Nora Roberts video, and that is the Key series, and I read Key of Light. I've had Key of Light for a very long time and just never picked it up in earnest, I guess, and was excited to pick this up as I like to have a Nora book going at all times for my porch reading and my wine drinking, which I'll be doing very soon. This is sort of a Celtic goddesses quest, ancient prophecy magic book. It's very convoluted and it really would do nothing for me to explain it. Um, you pick up on it fairly quickly, but it's difficult to say out loud. And our main character works at an art gallery when she gets involved in this. And of course she meets two other women who are involved in the same thing. One's a librarian and the other one is a hairdresser and a single mother, which I've never read in a Roberts book with a single mother. So I'm interested to see how that plays out. And they get involved and of course there's three male best friends who get involved. It's very classic, Nora, like a bunch of people solving a quest. What I loved most about this was the friendships, was the vibes, was the atmosphere, and how much I grew to really love our main character. I really loved her. So this is also a happy accident romance for me, meaning I really didn't like the romance at first. I was like, okay, I'll just ignore it like I tend to do. But I really ended up liking it. I felt like it was pretty earned by the end. Yes, like it moves a mile a minute, but I particularly liked how the main character dealt with her feelings and I liked the dynamics like at the beginning of the book you're like this guy's really pushy in a classic Nora Roberts way which I hated and then by the end like she was pushing him and it felt like there was a a quality of power dynamics more so and I ended up enjoying it I ended up ordering the next two books so I can start the second one like tomorrow so I'm very excited I loved it. I will say that there are a couple of very dated jokes in this book. Jokes in this book came out in 2003 and I'm going to put the one that like was the most 
egregious in my content warnings section in the description and the page numbers. So if you end up picking up this book because you just think it sounds fun or interesting, be aware of that, that little joke. In general though, I really, really liked it and it was super fun and I'm excited to continue in the series. So that was my last book that I wanted to wrap up. I'd love to know y'all's thoughts about this video style of wrapping up books. I found it to be so much less stressful and way more enjoyable, but I would, yeah, I would love to know your thoughts. <sighs> Have a lovely day.